Ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We're back for another podcast. And um, I'm excited about, well, I think I say this all the time. I'm always excited about this podcast I'm recording, but I'm excited today because I think, so I'm a father. Um, and and uh, every time I talk about things that impact children, it, of course, if you if you have kids, you know that this makes you feel three, five, six times more than anything, anything else. Uh-huh. So I, when I when I came across this project and and Juliet, that is my my guest today, um, I came across by accident, and I w- and I will explain later about how did I come across. But I'm super excited that Juliet accepted to talk to me. And so before I talk a little bit more, Juliet, why don't you introduce yourself and, and let us know who you are, so we can take it from there. Well, I'm Juliet. Uh, a Ugandan national. I'm, based, um, I'm the director of Zion Family Support, an organization that seeks to see that children grow up in their families and out of institutions. I got this passion simply because I've seen lots of children growing up in institutions, yet these children have parents, yeah. either an aunt, an uncle, one of them is living, but you happen to see that uh, most of these children are labeled to be orphans, yet in actual sense they are not. And then they end up in these institutions uh, with a view that these children have no living parent, have no one else to take care of them. Yet, this is not a fact. Mm-hmm. The fact is these children, three out of th- four of these children have a living parent. So I came to realize that no, we need to come up and uh, reveal the secret to the world that these children have living parents who really love them. Instead of separating these children from their families, it's better we support the families because it's stated that it's poverty that makes these children to separate from their families. And my question was, can't we solve this problem? Poverty is not a, a problem if there is a solution. So that's why you see that uh, our model is to empower these families by giving them a startup capital, work, and a living, and then take care of their of your children. So for everyone to understand what you what you are trying to do with the, with the Zion project is to make sure that and because you mentioned that so children are left in orphanages not because not necessarily because they don't have family but you said 75 percent of the times so or let's say 60 percent of the times they indeed have some family yes, but 75%. the family don't have a structure to support them right perfect 75 percent so, of the children have a living parent who can take care of them but to realize that instead of these institutions to support this families by keeping the children in their families, they instead separate them and take them in their care. Yet, either an aunt is available, or an uncle, or a sister, or even we can have adoptive families within Uganda. Those families are there that are willing to take care of these children because they are Ugandan children, but they don't look at that area. Instead, the only alternative they give is to ask the parent to give out the children to them. Yet, the there are people who are willing to take care of these children. Like uh, in Zion, uh, uh, if you, you, you follow us on Instagram, you've seen posts about grandmothers. Mm-hmm. They are willing to look after these children, provided they are empowered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, one of the things that I came across when I was looking about, when I was searching about Uganda because of the previous podcast we had, um, mm-hmm. is that and, and I don't have the data to tell why is that, so I, I don't want to make any judgment, so don't take it as a prejudgment. But what I came across is that the, 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 the amount of children left in orphanages is very high. It's and then it's also a problem because there is, <coughs> sorry, sorry, there is not enough conditions for, for the amount of children that are left to be, to be taken care of. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, it is. <coughs> A lot of children are, are in institutions, a very big number, very big number, and you wonder why. Because this, these children, the most touching issue is these children have someone who can take care of them. 
even a mere neighbor can do that, provided you support this parent. They are very willing, but a big number is in these institutions. And no one is willing to like reset all the children back. And you find that some children click an age of 18 to 19 is a boy, and you wonder where he will go. After 18, they are not supposed to be in these institutions, but they are not even prepared to meet the outside world. That's why I came up with this idea of keeping these children their family. And yeah. what kind of work do you do? So I, I think the idea is absolutely fantastic. So you work to keep the yeah. families together, which is often we see a lot of people yeah. working with a lot of people working with orphanages to get better life to the children. But what you do is you try to prevent children to get to the orphanages by getting the people together, the families together, right? But how do you do yeah, that? Perfect. Yeah. So our model is I try to say that uh, instead of saying that. Poverty is the reason as to why these children are separated from their families. My, 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 my opinion is, can't we solve this problem? Doesn't poverty have solutions to it? it yes, it, ha it does. Uh, I do this by giving these parents or the caregivers or beneficiaries a startup capital. Because you realize that most of these mothers are not working. That's why they are treated as vulnerable because they are not working, they are not earning, so they are vulnerable to such situations. Sometimes we find that a mother is living with maybe two or three, five children by the father left, and it's only the mother taking care of these children. But remember, she just does laundry, just earning like three dollars, which is not enough to parent, fees, feeding, medical. So that's why you find them that they are vulnerable to mm -hmm. be taken to these institutions. So I empower these mothers. They undergo a business training for a full month. Then we cover areas like parenting, areas concerning spiritual, spiritual growth. And then at the end of the day, they graduate from the business training because we look at, we train them on how to do money management, business planning, okay. bookkeeping, how to prevent losses, and then how to grow their businesses. By the time they go through that training, they're able to do all this. How I can do saving, I can reinvest it back into my business for it to grow, how I can do, uh, how I can prevent losses, such things. So by the time they graduate, they know how to do that. And then they start working with all the knowledge uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> you can't? Yeah, I can. I can. can. You? It breaks sometimes. Okay. 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 So, we basically I do uh, empowerment. Then they start working. After every, three, after every after three months, I go out for business evaluation to track how they are progressing. In case they find challenges here and there, we try to share and try to guide them on how to go about certain things. Then after, uh, because I've just started, it's just a month, just a few months since uh, Zion started, but the model is uh, I do the follow-up for the first one year, and then second year I want to see independence. What can they do when they don't see me on the ground? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the model. And this money is non refundable. It's a grant. Okay. So, with this, I've seen that these parents are really working very hard to see that they keep their children with them. And they are aiming at seeing that their businesses grow and they continue to progress. And honestly speaking, I've seen them very excited to be with their children. Because some of the cases I've posted on Instagram. These are some of the mothers who had gone to the local government wanting referrals to place the children in the orphanage. Why? Because they know in those institutions, the children will be fed, they will get the medical attention, they will be educated, which are the basic needs of the children because they cannot afford them. So that's why they prefer taking these children simply because they don't have the means. But when they refer to Zion, and I try to explain to them what Zion does, they welcome the idea and they accept to work with us. 
it, because just uh, I, it, if I if I say it wrong, you, you correct me. But you you, ha you are you have a bachelor in economical development, right? Economic empowerment. Economic empowerment. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. So, and that is interesting. And so, yeah. because one of the things that we have come across very often, and this is, was one of the reasons why I even found you, because um, I was trying to read a bit about this no white savior um, um, thing and the fact that there is a trend of um, people kind of questioning sometimes the, the, the real intentions of uh, <coughs> Uh, white people coming from the Europe and trying to save the world in Africa as if we are more capable, less capable. Um, and so I, I came across Zion as I came across of other projects that I already talked in other podcasts as local yeah. people creating programs and, and, and um, foundations that are helping locals, right? So that, which is your case, you are local, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, Having four children, and I will put it clear, four children, man, I, I can't, <laughs> I, I admire everyone that has more than one. I, I cannot really imagine. <laughs> How can you do that? Um, why did you decide to do that? And I, you explained to me what is the reason, why, what is Zion doing it, but why did you one day after having so many children and having a pretty busy life, I can imagine with them, decide mm -hmm. I'm going to help preventing children to be left in orphanages. Why that? It's just a passion. It's a passion because uh, I've see, I'd seen so many cases of a TV whereby uh, these institutions would fake the parents. I would call it faking because you would fall a case whereby a mother stay. When I took the child to this institution, they said they will keep the child till the child makes 10 years or six, depending on what they agreed upon. And then after that, uh, that period, they would reset the child back when I've tried to, to, you know, maybe try to find work so that I can work and take care of the child. By the end of the day, when I went to ask for the resettlement, they instead say that the child was taken to the U.S. without even my consent. So such cases would really t uh, touch my heart. Then you'd find that uh, in trying to, uh, like the institutions, train, trying to defend themselves, they will bring out a file whereby this parent signed. But when you ask the mother that you signed here and there, then the mother would say, when, because I'm not learned, they were just interpreting for me. And then in the interpretations, they were telling me, that yeah, hey, here are you saying because you've agreed to, to keep, give us the child, child for four years, after four years we will settle the child back. So you saying, and then I appended my signature knowing that after this period of time, my child will be resettled. But instead, when you read through, the, the reading would say, I've accepted uh, giving away my child to be adopted. You get it? Which nonsense is that? Because the mother is not learned, you're trying to capitalize on her ignorance, and then you end up taking the child or the children away from her. By the mere fact that the mother goes back to this institution to ask for the child back, simply means that the mother really loves the children or her child back. Not so. Then she wouldn't have followed up. So that alone touched me, and I felt, no, this is something we need to fight against. Why international adoption? Can't yes. we do? Can't we do intercountry adoption? Yeah, but rather, rather domestic, domestic adoption because yeah. it also works domestically, like via through um, called what I'm, I'm forgetting. Um, there is domestic adoption, yeah. but like I said, uh, oh goodness, I'm forgetting what I wanted to mention. <laughs> it's okay, but, but, but let's yeah. let's speak that that uh, that topic because that's I, I was trying to not bring that up because it's of course much more political. But one of the reasons I I, I came across when I was investigating a little bit about this uh, adoption thing is that there is a massive a massive business behind. Yes, uh, it's a business. I yes, like it's it a business. It's almost like human trafficking, right? It is. It is. 
You have see parents me. crying over TV. Oh, no, I didn't give up my children. I did not wanting to grab someone, wanting to, you know? Yeah. That alone touched my heart and I said, no, we need to stop this. If these institutions, if these white, because by the way, most of the, the orphanages here are run by whites. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, like one, or like, sorry, like 98% are run by whites. And you wonder what's the logic behind of taking these children in these institutions and to why are you adopting them? Because if you read the, there is an article under Better Care Network, this is the end, Better Care Network, it explains the dangers which these children face in these institutions. They are very, very bad, bad effects to our children. So that's why I'm like, no, in these families, in our families, we get to be identified, you know, Mm -hmm. like functions of our family to get to be identified to get to know your norms your customs your tradition you find a child going in this institution, institution they're unable to work because one there is a nanny working for them a, child, a girl of 18 cannot even wash her clothes because in the institution someone is working to be paid Yet in the family as a mother i can sit down with my children and try to tell them how they're supposed to 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 behave but in the institution no one can do that because these people are paid they only do what they are told to do even the dangers are not good to our children so that's why i'm like no let's support the children within their families let the mother or the auntie be with the child educate the child as they train them the norms of their tribe yeah and the, and i think that's do, do you think that um and i will i will tell you very honest i before i was reading about um your project and i was reading about the situation in uganda and it's not just in uganda in different countries as well i i, I of course i always knew about the international adopting and the fact that a lot of people has issues um to adopt in their own countries and i tell you for example in the netherlands if i try to adopt yeah. a, a kid it will take me probably three to five six years um and so people kind of gives that up and, and, and start looking for international adoption coming from countries like uh, uh, Uganda, where is obviously there is a bypass on a lot of bur bureaucratical processes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that people on this end, people like me, that could be me, right? I'm not saying mm -hmm. that they are all bad people. Do they really understand um, the impact of um, the fact that we have this high demand for international international adoption that sometimes ends up being international kid children trafficking. I don't think they really understand because why then would they do that? Yeah, which is a problem, right? It's probably yeah. we are missing probably proper yeah. information, right? I sometimes I I ask myself in the U.S. Don't they have vulnerable children who need the support? Yes. yes. If they do, why then come to Africa? Can they support the children in their country? Why run to Africa? It's because of our systems, Juliet. And, and I'm not, the, I'm, to be clear, I'm, I'm not excusing, but I, I tell you, uh, it is insane that an adoption process, for example, in the Netherlands, can take easily three, four years. Three, four years. It's the process you need to go. For. If I want to adopt, and I tell you because I wanted to adopt a few years ago. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I gave up, not because I, I do not, don't want to adopt anymore, but I felt it was, it was emotional, it is emotional exhausting for you to think about connecting to, to a children and go through a, a four year. And then, for example, nothing happens because something goes wrong. It, it's just, you know, mentally it's very hard. But here it's very cheap. And it's we, wrong. <laughs> anyway, for some, some reasons, political issues, which we cannot talk about. I understand, I understand. Yeah. It's a, let, let's then forget the, 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 this, this trafficking part. I think it's, I think it's, mm. I just wanted to make people clear that the reason why. And by the way, even, even if you look at the cost it, it takes you guys to adopt here, you really, those guys really spend a lot of money. Yes. You get? Yet for me, to empower a, a single mother, it's very cheap. Yeah, oh, okay. That's interesting. Is it? Is it so cheap? Yes, because you wonder. Some, someone can spend like $30, rather $30,000 yeah. or 
thousand dollars. For sure, for sure, yeah, for sure. To do a single adoption. Yeah. But for Julia to empower one mother to keep her children home in a family, it's very cheap. Um, don't don't you think that um, and I think you know, how many people do work with you? It's it's you alone, or do you have other people working with you? Apparently, I'm alone, but I have people who have applied wanting to join. Only that I'm stuck with funds. Mm -hmm. Like Good right now, I don't have an established office. I work within community. I go meet the clients in the community and do the training from there. But since I don't have the funding, I'm unable to empower because I need someone to do the work of social work. I'm doing the work of social work. I'm doing the work of business training. I do the follow-up, I do the shopping, everything, simply because I don't have the, the funds to hire staff, because they also need to be paid. Of course. But of because course. I don't have that on my budget, I cannot. What I solicit through uh, No White Savior is what I use. Hmm. They help you, right? And, and I, I, yeah. want to, I want to, to yeah. make clear that they, they have a very big help from what No White Saviors. Yeah, they've really tried to connect me to different yeah. people have, who have come. Donors, you can get, someone can donate to you like $100. You go on like the, uh, adding up, adding up until you, you get what you want to, to run a class. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would like to make a, a, a very important remark about No White Saviors. I think um, I, I, the work they are doing for groups like yours, it's absolutely fantastic. And I would like to very, to very fantastic. give them because a they, word. Because it's been not, there since day one, like doing the registration, they were there, all the classes. Because now I'm running the third class. I think yeah. next time I'll be posting their businesses. And they helped us to get a computer, the one I'm using now, uh, like getting the internet device, it's them. They've been there for us. They really support our work because they're seeing an indigenous person leading a strong project, trying to keep children in families and out of orphanages. Yeah. And, and I like this Africa for Africa, right? Africa for Africa, for Ugandans by Ugandans. I love that. Yeah. I, I, and and, and I'm, I'm, I'm no hypocrite because I, I usually say um, that we should also have Dutch for Netherlands and British for Britain. It's not, we don't have just problems in Africa. And I think we have different <laughs> types of issues, right? I'm not saying that we don't have, but we also have plenty of problems in the, land, in the Netherlands and, uh, and in Portugal. And, and we, sometimes we spend too much time thinking about problems abroad and we forget the, all our own ones. I, I said, it's, it's ridiculous. We need to see four it's or five years to adopt the children. So we need to, to, to fix that rather than just try and, and, and buy children abroad, right? It's ridiculous, honestly. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Instead um, of focusing on your own issues, yeah, focus on someone's, you know. Yes. Yeah. But 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 make no mistake, Judith. I I think if you get people that gives you honest help, irrespective of their color, that's still valid, huh? And that's what we would do, appreciate. Yes. Like, honest help. With I think someone said. I think it was no white savers. I said, if you. If you if you if you want to help me without a camera, that is a good thing. Yes, and yeah. another thing, why would you want to to your face to be shown to yeah. the nation, to the whole world, yeah. that it's you being the savior to this group? Yeah. Like uh, Juliet is standing in to support my local people. Yeah. If you're there to support, you don't need to to be shown on the camera. Let Juliet prevail. Yeah. So yeah, today, for the record, everyone, uh, I, my camera is being shown. Julie is not being there because her camera is is, is destroying the connection. Otherwise, yes. her, her face will be more important than mine. Uh huh. <laughs> but again, I would love I would love to get the support from you guys, from the guys who who really see that this work matters, of seeing that uh, a Ugandan person is leading a strong project of trying to solve a problem at home. Yes. So it is okay. one of the things I'm doing, and I don't, don't get, I also have been already accused to be a no white savior. Um, uh, sorry, to be a white savior because I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people. But for everyone to know, I, I talk to people from, from Bolivia, from North America, from Africa, from Europe, from all over the world. And, um, and, and the only thing I'm doing is to share your stories, right? So it's nothing to do with me. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm just a, kind of a podcast or nothing else. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I just because I, but other people also have this eight thing. They just made it sound like I'm trying to get to become rich. So this is a no ad. Is ad free. I I would like is that people just listening to this story, yeah. they understand that you also need help and they can help you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I don't really need anything. I just need a computer and and the, and the and the microphone. I don't need any help from anyone. So I don't need any. Big fire. up, big up, big up, big up. That's what you need. <laughs> you Juliet and and the and the design the family. They need help, not me. Yes, you're right. So, um, what kind of help do you get from, and I don't want to get into political discussion, so tell me when yes. something can go any direction that you don't want to talk about, but what kind of support do you get from your government? And how is this, the, the political situation in Uganda to, to, to fight these type of things? Is that something that exists or is still a problem? It is a problem because, again, if it wasn't a problem, then it wouldn't be looking for support from the outside world. Much as the government is seeing this as a problem, what I mean of children being adopted, because again, you find that the government instead invests a lot in cases where a Ugandan mother is, is fighting to get her child back. There the government comes in to support. No? Mm -hmm. But again, what caused the mother to take the child to the orphanage that is not looked at they don't come out to support families that are in bad situation that are at a risk of placing their children in institutions they will never see the government coming in but when a mother is fighting to get the child back and then that's when you see the government trying to support the mother to get justice so like in my work i don't get any support from the government and most interesting if i'm to get a certificate of registration i pay <laughs> okay. even yes. though even though it's an ngo yes uh, right now i'm at a level of a cbo community-based organization mm -hmm. and I, I want to tell you that you have to pay yeah, after one year, in the Netherlands as well. Yeah, we have to pay here as well. But I think yeah. in your case, you shouldn't. Maybe pay. if that's how, maybe the one way they would have supported us that you yeah, are, since you're doing work within Uganda and trying to solve a problem, do it really. But you have to pay. Yeah. Now, like, uh, you want funding to say that because so many people need this support of Zion. So many. If I tell you how many referrals I have. My desk, there are so many, but I, I can only afford to support five clients at a go. I cannot do 10 or 15 due to funding. And there's no way else in my country where I can get this support. Yeah. Is there any way people can donate to your group or? Yeah, apparently, like I shared, uh, I don't have a, uh, I need support. That's the number one thing mm -hmm. for this work to go on. But the only way to do the support is through the people account for No White Savior. Because I was told I needed someone internationally who has such an account and mm -hmm. maybe can be collecting funds for me. But I haven't found one. So we, every, people can support you through No White Savior, that's it? Yeah, but you tag family. Yes, yes, of course. Once, once you... Yeah, once you tag family, that money is allocated towards my work. And that's how I've been getting the funds that I've been using to, to, to support the first two groups. Everyone listening. Everyone listening. Yeah. Julia needs help. Yeah. I need help by the way to do this work. We need office. And like, by the way, let me share this also to the entire world. Uh, by June, our, um, the office of the uh, CBO told us that, that uh, we yeah. need to have established offices because mm -hmm. one, they want to do the vetting of these CBOs yeah. because they know my work. That's why they even send me referrals. But some Ugandans do fake the whites. Correct. Correct. Uh, they tend to tell them that I have a CBO, I have an NGO. They send money to them, chunks of money, but when there is no work on the ground. Yeah, for, so for they realize, yeah, so they realize that the 
only way to solve this is to, by having us establishing offices so that they can even come vet. But I, as I, I mentioned, I don't have any funding on the ground. So that means I'll need to have a running budget fair, meaning the office is there, we need to pay utilities, <clears throat> we need to, have, uh, to hire staff who need to be paid for the work done. So now I'm in a dilemma, I'm confused. I'm like, hey, what happens after here? Because this is March, April is coming, May, June, what will happen? So I need the funding, the support to see that to establish, uh, say that to the ministry, because they will have the people from the Ministry of Gender, uh, because we are under that through the Ministry of Internal mm -hmm. Affairs, they will be coming on the ground in each district to vet these CBOs that are recognized. But like for Zion, we are fully registered. Our work is noticed because uh, every group that I support, I send a, a report to the CBO. Mm -hmm. So my work is really known, but what will happen if we don't establish the office? Mm -hmm. So that's where we are right now. So everyone, Juliet needs help. I said it again. <laughs> your your work is way too important for us to to, to ignore that. Um, yeah, lots of I have so many referrals really on my table. People need support. Different organization. I'm glad there is a partner organization I got. Uh, they reset the children back and they work with children with uh, disabilities. So we've now partnered, they sent me referrals. I've started on the training with one, one of their clients. So she'll get empowered very soon. So like such people are now witnessing and they are really happy to see that Zion is doing such a great job because for them, they don't have such a program on their budget. Yeah. They can't do the business support to these families. So they're now sending to me. By the person they are sending to, I just solicited for funding to is someone who is worried, not knowing what will happen after May if we don't have an established office. So, hey, guys out there who really support families, who really believe children should grow up in their families, if you're a mother, you know what it means, you're a father, you know what it means, hanging up with your children, please come up and support Zen family. Juliet needs help. I'm asking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Juliet, um, we are coming to a, to a, to a, an end in terms of timing, and I will make sure that I, I will use my own um, professional network as well to, to broadcast the, the, yeah. the project. Oh, thanks. thanks. Um, which is for everyone to know, this is not my job. <laughs> a lot of people think that, you know, that a lot of people ask me if I quit my job, and this is my job. No, this is not my job, it's just my part time. Uh, just my hobby, oh, yeah. I would say. So I do Thanks this. For, for giving up your time by that to do this. Uh, it's Thanks perfectly so fine. Because we right. don't pay you guys. We don't pay him. No, no, no. No, one, no one is paying me. No one is paying me. It's yeah, we free. don't pay him. No, no, it's all for free, and, <laughs> yeah. I, and I'm doing it on my private time. And I, I mean, I really enjoy it. So you know, for you to know, I, I have, this is probably now. I forgot to count, but I think it's the 20th or 22nd. I don't know. It's going to be the 19th published, but I think is we have already more than 20 recorded. Um, and I've learned so much uh, with so many people like you. That is, yeah. is way too inspiring for me to, to be worried about my private time. Um, Juliet, yeah. we are co coming to an end in terms of yes. time. Um, what, I, usually I like people to leave and I never usually don't prepare them. So I, if they listen to the podcast before, they, they should know that they should prepare it. I usually ask people to leave a final message for, for the people that are listening to take home and think about, you know, yeah. because you know that this project is about the project I'm creating, the talk it through is about sharing stories to also inspire others to do something. So I like to leave, to finish the podcast with a message, not like a, a, a motto, but rather people, something for people to take home and think about so they can also do something. What's your uh, message? My message, like in one statement or? Oh, what? What do you like people to go home and think about? What do you all like right. to think about of your? Of all right, all right. One, I would love people to think of having a, your child, your child home, 
and then this child of yours is being taken away by someone you don't know. How do you feel? Can you imagine or think about what the other family will do to this child? If your mother, your father, your parent, can you imagine missing your child to another family? Moreover, not within your country. Just imagine, how can you there sleep, eat, when you don't see your child with you? You're alive, you're not dead, mm -hmm. but this child of yours has been taken by someone, not within your country, has going to learn different norms. And another thing, what do you think the other family will tell this child about the biological parents? Will they, will they tell this child that your parents loved you so much, that's why you ended up in our hands? Of course, no. Please, let's try to see that we keep our children. Let's try to see that we love our children. No matter what we have with us, let's utilize the little we have. If you, you sleep hungry, sleep hungry with your child. She will know, he will know that today mom and dad have not gotten what to eat, but at least I'm with my parents. Hey, tomorrow God will provide. So please come up and support Zion because our aim is to see that we keep our children, we train them, we nurture them in the way we want. We groom them to the fullest. Love you all. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet, if you don't mind, could you switch on your camera for 20 seconds, for two seconds for people to see that I'm not talking to a robot? <laughs> oh, you see, that's Juliet. Yes, it's Juliet. It's not being a robot. It's Juliet. Yeah. Juliet, yeah. thank you very much for, for this conversation. I really enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for your time. I'm oh, humbled. Have a great evening. I know it's already three hours more than me in Uganda. And keep up the good work. And I'm We'll try to help as much as we can as well. Thanks so much. I'll keep praying for you guys. But you, keep in mind, come June, if we don't establish an office, we are closing down. And I don't want to see this. Help them. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yep.